Hi, this is Varsha and today we're going to be talking about the BMAT. So we do see a lot of videos in which people share the resources that they've used in the BMAT exam, but I haven't really seen many videos at all about how they specifically use those resources to help them with their revision for the BMAT. So this video is going to be about how I specifically used each of the resources and what was helpful for me really. It might not be helpful for you, but it's always worth a try. So first, we're going to talk more generally about how I feel like is a useful way to go about revising for the BMAT. That's going to be me starting off with a few general tips. And then we're going to be talking about specifically examples of resources that I have used for the BMAT. Timestamps are in the description, so please do not feel obliged to watch the whole video. If you feel like you want to know how a specific resource works, then just skip to that section of the video and make use of that. So generally, I want to talk about three main things really. The first thing is that find other resources online. Do not just start from using the official questions of the BMAT. So do not start from using past papers straight away. Do not start from using, if, if you have enough time really, like if you are watching this video three, four months before the BMAT or one or two months before the BMAT, that means you should not just jump straight into past papers because you have not had a go at any of the normal style questions. That is just my opinion that you should just find some online res online resources instead. For example, BMAT Ninja has a lot of questions which are available, which are free and they're not the same as the BMAT interview questions. So I think you should start off with those really. That is my first tip. My second tip really is that you should focus on your weaknesses even before you start the BMAT. You should know that the BMAT is composed of four dif of different sections. The first one is all about critical thinking and it has maths problems and verbal reasoning, such type questions. That's the first section. The second section is science. Even within science, you already know that there is maths, chemistry, biology and physics, those four sections. So I knew at my time that physics was one of my weaknesses and even some of my friends, they did not do physics A level or physics AS and they found it much, much harder to answer the BMAT questions which were related to physics. So what we all did was we started off our revision by targeting physics because we knew that that was the, that was the specific subject that we did not have the same amount of knowledge in. So it's always solve with your weakness. If you know already that one subject, in, in specifically in the BMAT, one thing in the BMAT is, is one of your weaknesses, it's where you might struggle the most, start off by learning the specification for that specific thing if you have enough time. These are tips if you have enough time really. If you do not have enough time, you should just jump to past papers and that should be your main strategy of revision. Specifically for physics, because it was my weakness, what I specifically did was I took the specific concepts that I didn't understand, for example, kinetic energy, which I, which I had forgotten at that time. And then I googled GCSE YouTube videos on that specific concept. So it's really, really important if you do not understand a subject like physics, find some sort of video thing explaining it. Do not try to just understand it from the textbook because that was one of the mistakes that one of my friends did. What they did was they just used the 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 section two guide and then that's what they thought prepared them for physics. But in fact, understanding physics, for understanding physics, just Google videos or any subject really, just Google YouTube videos on them. And then you will be able to understand a few of the main important concepts which keep reoccurring inside the BMAT exam. There are specific things which always, almost certainly just come up in every paper. So those sorts of reoccurring themes, it's really important to explore those. The third tip, the third general tip I feel like is that you should build your mental arithmetic skills. This helped me so much in the actual exam. So your use of fractions, algebraic fractions, just keep practicing. Just find GCSE worksheets on doing al algebraic fractions or doing really, really fast multiplication sums just really quickly. Even try like finding shortcuts to those sorts of things because that will increase your speed. BMAT is a test of applying your knowledge and solving difficult difficult questions but the main thing about the BMAT is that it's in a timed situation that is the thing with any admissions test to be honest the timed conditions aspect of it so do whatever makes it easier for you to cut down on seconds anywhere and learning that will actually help you in so many of the arithmetic sort of questions so just make sure you have that sort of basis and some 
the key kind of things that I did was like in homework, in my maths homework or even in chemistry. So in chemistry we have a lot of moles, calculations and things like that. For homework I started doing those without a calculator as well. Obviously I start, I obviously I checked with a calculator later, but that is a way to actually just improve your arithmetic skills whilst keeping up with your A-level studies as well at the same time. So you can actually just include it in your daily life really. You can download an app in which you have to do multiplication really rapidly or you have to solve those sorts of things. Do that because that will really really increase your speed and speed in the BMAT is very very important. Seconds actually can make the difference between you passing the threshold for a certain university or not. So increase your speed, that is a very very important strategy that you should use. This should be one of your main resources for section 2. So um, the BMAT specification guide is where you have like, for, for A level and GCC, how you have a specification and it highlights all the certain points which you need to know. In the same way for BMAT they've released a specification guide. So that is really, really important. It's a quick way of just reading through the whole guide and just understanding which things you do not know. What I would recommend is print it out and highlight all the stuff you do not know. And by the end of one or two months of revision, you should be able to know every single point or try and aim to know every single point on that specific guide. So if you have enough time, try and go through most of that content. So if you have like two months for revision or one month even, just use that guide as your main priority but if you have something like two weeks until your BMAT exam then obviously use past papers to try and identify what are the key things which reoccur in every paper or go through the most important topics in that way from past papers if that is your last resort but if you have a lot of time just start from the specification guide that is everything you need to know please 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 do not copy and make no new notes on that specification guide because it's literally a, like a CGP textbook. It has everything inside of it. You do not need to rewrite anything from there. That is what you need to know. It's all condensed already. If that's already con condensed, you do not need to rewrite it or make notes in your own words. Please just focus on getting it inside your brain, all the points inside your brain, instead of finding new ways to rewrite the whole resource all over again. There is no need to do that. There is a clear condensed specification and there is a specification guide. So that is all you basically need for that specific section, really. Could make specific flashcards on each of the subjects, maths, chemistry, biology, and physics, but that even that would maybe lead to a lot of flashcards in the end. So first try and memorize everything, and then whatever you feel like you just cannot remember, make flashcards for those discrete facts. Flashcards are the best way for getting all that information inside your brain in that sense. So use some sort of active recall method to put all of that information in your brain. Do not recreate the whole textbook or do not recreate the whole specification guide or anything like that. There is no need to do that. Everything is there in that specific book already. The ISC medical book. So that is one of the main things which I used for the BMAT and that basically formed the basis of my whole revision, really. I just feel like that book had so many different questions in it and it was just so useful. Please, I really, really recommend that book. Buy the ISC Medical book and what I would say is that I also used this other book called, it's called The Ultimate BMAT Guide, but that book also had, I'm going to put a picture of it over here, but that book actually had quite a few spelling mistakes. Do not let that put you off, but if you need any extra questions, just buy that book as well. So you would have those two books or try and borrow it from a library or somewhere like that. Do not, you don't have to buy it. My first tip for using the ISC medical book is that you should answer the questions in pencil. So do not, do not do the answers in pen. Do the answers in pencil. So why, why is that important? Why would I say to do that? Basically what I did was I answered the maths, chemistry, biology and section one questions as well, all in pencil. And then I rubbed them out after a certain period of time. I rubbed them all out, but I made a, a I made an actual note. I took a notebook and I made a note of all those questions which I got wrong for the first time. So for example, if I got the second question wrong, the eighth question wrong and the fifth question wrong in the first section, then I would write that down in the book. So I made a note of all those question numbers which I've got wrong and then I would retry those in the future. So this is a really, really important method because I feel like it just helps you realize, have I actually learned from my mistake 
or have I just read that answer once and forgotten about it? It helps you understand if that method that the that the book used for a specific sort of question which you didn't know before, if that method is actually ingrained in your brain or not. So please just do it in pencil and it's so important to just keep redoing questions as well from that specific book because that will actually help you know whether it's gone in or not and do that after an interval so for example two or three weeks make sure you go through those same questions which you've done already but they're rubbed out and you can't see the lines or anything if you feel like that still you can still see that then just do the whole do every single question in a different in in a different notebook and keep your actual ic medical book blank do not write anything in it i feel like a lot of people just do questions and they just forget about it but the, the truth is if i if i give you those first 10 questions again you are going to probably get those same mistakes you're going to probably make those same mistakes which you made in the first time to make sure that you've learned from your mistakes do questions all over again that you have got wrong first if you're starting off using the IC medical book, what I did was I didn't really time myself for the first two, three days. But do not do too many questions when you're like, don't waste questions. But so I did them untimed first, like for two, three days. But some people, what they do is they do untimed for like two or three weeks. I would not recommend that. I would say that the whole point of the BMAT is actually doing it in the time limit. So the sooner you get yourself to practice that using that time limit, that is a really, really important thing in my eyes that you should just tr start doing timed questions as soon as you possibly can because that will really really help you in getting getting into the feel feel of actually answering those questions under pressure because that is a completely different that has a completely different vibe to actually answering those questions in an untimed fashion you might be wondering how i specifically used those the IEC medical book to actually time myself so what i did was i gave myself so if there's five questions on each specific page, like it doesn't take you that long actually. I did it in short bursts, so I didn't do like a whole mock paper. I didn't create a whole mock paper for myself by doing 20 questions in that specific time. What I did was I just timed myself for specific pages. For example, the first two pages, if they had 10 questions on each page, if they had 10 questions in total, what I did was I set a timer for 10 minutes and made sure I did all those questions in 10 minutes. Let's say I left two questions out. I did them untimed, like I did them untimed after my timer ended i still did them it's not like i left them blank and i just looked at the answer i still did them but i didn't give myself any credit for them so i still get that practice for all the questions in but i also get that practice in that specific time limit as well it's really really useful to get yourself into that habit early of doing the questions in a proper time mannered fashion still finish don't just stop where you are still finish the whole thing but do not credit yourself for those answers which you did after the time limit make sure you get into the habit of i can answer five questions in five minutes and that to each one very very accurately that is the skill that the bmat tests really it's that problem solving ability is so key do not waste questions the more questions you do by yourself without looking at the answer that is the most important thing just do not credit yourself for the questions that you have not answered in the time limit. After doing that IC medical book and you're, you feel like you're closer to the exam, if you're about 3-4 weeks ish away from the actual exam, that's when you should start using past papers in my opinion. And then what you should do is review, make sure you get all those past papers done in about 2 weeks. And in the last week before you sit the BMAT, that's when you should redo all those past papers and go over all your mistakes and do that all over again because that allows you some time in the middle to actually forget the answers that you did and forget the papers in between even giving yourself six weeks before you start before the bmat and starting to use past papers then that is also fine just do not waste every single past paper early and keep one paper keep one or two papers ab about five six days before your bmat exam so you get to test yourself and see where you actually are that will be a very very accurate representation of where you stand in terms of the score and whether you are where you want to be in that sense have a schedule for doing past papers keep a two week time limit before the actual bmat exam and during those two weeks you are going to redo every single past paper which you've already done but the key thing is for the second or third time not for the first time second or third time make sure you keep one or two papers which you've never done before as i said to provide an accurate representation of where you where your score stands in that sense that is also very important. 
Although it is important to go through all of them, please do not start too early. Make sure you have a key grasp of the timing, using the IC medical book. Do not waste the actual part of the questions in that sense. Do every single paper you can find, the oldest paper you can find, and do all of that. Obviously, a past paper will not last you the whole day if you're doing a, if you're doing revision even like when it's closer to the exam time so there are two other resources which i would really really feel are key to point out what i used was also the tsa oxford papers so what that was useful for was the section one of the bmat so it had critical thinking questions they're pretty pretty similar to what the bmat is like so i used a lot of those as well because they're officially set questions so you can rely on those questions a lot and they are kind of more reliable in, in a sense than any other book that you can find so do all of the tsa papers if you have time and there's also one more resource which is the ocr critical thinking papers because in the bmat you also have critical thinking questions so the ocr critical thinking papers do those as well as many as you can find I'm going to link the TSA papers and the critical thinking papers in the description below and they will just be an additional resource for you to use if you run out of questions. But I would recommend doing, if you're if you're very very bored of using the IC medical book, just start doing those. If you're urged to actually start, papers to start doing past papers too early, just do those TSA Oxford papers and do the, just do those TSA Oxford papers and do the OCR critical thinking papers. So do those instead of doing the past papers really, really early on. So you still get a feel of what exam questions are meant to be like, but not from the BMAT specifically. They, are, they were really, really useful to use. Please try and aim to do those as well before your BMAT. They will be useful. The links to those two are in the description below, so please make sure to check them out. Do not worry if you can't do them, but I would highly recommend at least having a go at two or three of each of those papers and if you have a lot of time now we're in lockdown and if you have that much time so this situation cannot be any better to do as many questions as you can and that too by not wasting past paper questions by using the IC medical book and using these two past paper sort of resources which are not the actual BMAT resources but they're pretty pretty similar in the question style and everything like that Thank you for watching the video. If you feel like this was very useful for you in any sense, please comment down below and I will make more videos on the BMAT and maybe how and maybe share more techniques on how I actually revise for the BMAT and more videos will be coming soon about the personal statement and things like that. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Please subscribe below. You will get notifications of every new video that comes up on the channel and if this was useful for you in any sense, or if you need any sort of help or if you have any more questions about the BMAT then my email is linked below in the description as well so please feel free to email me if you need any sort of guidance or if you just want to ask anything about medicine in general thank you so much for watching